25. Amen. We, uh, as we're approaching the end of the year, I know everybody said, well, it's October. Well, we're already getting into the second week of October. We need to All right. All right. schedule a meeting so that we can approve our budget this month because we've got uh, a couple weeks then. Um, we probably, most of us are going to be gone or heading out because Thanksgiving is heading around the corner. Um, we're trying to get something scheduled for Thanksgiving. I hope that we can get the building. Um, I gave a lead to Laura. Um, very good idea that the missionaries came up with. I was praying about that. And God is good. I'm telling you, I'm excited about what they're getting ready to do. Um, because y'all know me, I'm about service to the community. Amen. 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 And so if we can make this happen, that, that's going to be awesome. Um, I'm looking forward to that. Amen. 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 And that is instead of giving out turkeys this year, and I thought about it, and it made sense because most people, they get a turkey, they don't have a way of cooking it, they don't want to cook it. And if they do cook it, they only gonna eat a little bit of it and they don't really have a lot to share with. So if we can give somebody a meal or have a meal prepared and feed them. And then especially some of our, our older saints, or well, some of the saints that may not even have somebody to share a meal with, but they're a good fellowship period. Amen. So for those of you all that may end up spending Thanksgiving alone. This would be a good time to fellowship with friends and family. Amen? Amen. Amen. So pray that we're able to find a building. Um, I gave uh, Laura a uh, contact. I shouted to Laura and Patricia this morning to look at your text. Um, and I was at the barbershop yesterday and getting my hair cut. Shut up, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> What hair, Pastor? <laughs> I got little stubbles on there. Now and then. And, um, and uh, one of the things that was brought up to me when I expressed it to one of the uh, 
NAACP and a cold, cold. <clears throat> and she shared that she knew a person that may be of some assistance to us that uh, could help us. So she gave me the number of this man that owns a place that may be able to help us pro bono. I don't know. So God always works things out. Yes, he does. Yes, yes, he does. Right. Yes. So, um, but she did ask one thing. Um, she said, if there's any of us in our congregation that would like to volunteer to go help work the hose. I told her we do have one person that's going to work over in Salem District. But she said, um, if there's anybody else that would like to go work the hose, uh, let me know when I give you all the number so that you all can go work the hose. I didn't say who you vote for. Let me make sure I explicitly say that. But if you want to go work the hose, that way you can go hand out the literature and whatever <coughs> she would have you to do. Um, you know, y'all see that I sort of kind of work behind the scenes a little bit, sort of kind of helping out. I will suggest if you haven't voted, please go out and vote. Amen. Right. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It is extremely important um, that we exercise our right uh, and all of those, I think, Corbin High School, I think some of the high schools are registering some of those who are 18 prior. Is James Moreau doing that? Oh, yeah. They are. Amen. And so some of the schools are taking the initiatives to high school that many of students are turning 18 prior to November 7th, then registering to get the vote. So, um, and that's, a, that's an awesome thing um, to get these, our young folks uh, prepared, ready to exercise their right to do what? To vote. And so I shared with my oldest grandson who will be coming out of school next year. He won't be 18 until next, little, next February. That, hey, when you turn, let's get you registered to vote. Um, so that she can exercise your guy right to vote. You know, I hear people keep saying, well, the bills are bad. Okay, all right, we'll keep thinking that. <laughs> then don't complain. I had a young man that I've known for 30 years that owns a restaurant in Fredericksburg. And he complained that the taxes, taxes, the food taxes going up, which ultimately would affect those of us who are sitting here. And he said, man, the taxes, the food tax is going up. I said, did you vote? Man, that don't count. I said, stop complaining to me. <laughs> all right, all right. What do you mean? I said, if you don't get out of the vote, then stop complaining that the taxes are going up because you're allowing those who are still in the seat to stay in the seat. All right, yeah. Mm -hmm. And when I went down and exercised my right to vote, all of those who are still in the seat are still unopposed. Amen. So if you don't get involved in the process, Thank you. please forgive me how I say this, kick your mouth up. Okay. It's just as simple as that. Amen. He's telling me that you don't care. You don't care for what the future is for your children and your children's children. That's just as simple as that. I, and I'm, forgive me for being bold to say that, but that's simply how it's put. Now, one of the things we have to learn how to do is learn unity, working Amen. together. Amen. All right now, hey, Everybody. Hey, I was listening to a preacher this morning, and he was telling us that we got to learn how to work as a union. We may not all be unified, but we got to learn how to work as a union. All right, right. Just because you get caught up in the net don't mean you all are the same fish. All right, now. That may be some croaker. We went out to eat last night. My wife, she was like, how they know that croaker was that big? <laughs> Because she used to eat tilapia. Y'all understand where I'm coming from. Because she got some flounder last night. Y'all, y'all, y'all. Come on, y'all. Catch up with me, man. 
It's what you used to. See, sometimes we don't like trying things new. Y'all understand where I'm coming from. You know, sometimes we just like the same old thing. Sometimes you got to shake it up. What did Jesus tell him? Yes, sir. Drop your net on this side. Yeah. All right. Well, Jesus, we've been fishing all. Yes, is to say the same thing we've been saying all along. We've been going through this same thing all our lives. And ain't nothing. I know y'all said, Pastor, you're not supposed to give an answer. <laughs> If ain't nothing else in a wake up call that's going on there, y'all, we got to wake up. Oh oh, Somebody down in Florida holler, we are, we, are you woke or you woke, whatever you want to call me? Woke. <laughs> anyway, so those are some of the things we have going on. Uh, Toys for Tots is the campaign initiative has begun to right. kick off. We All really right. need to. I'm going to get to that third Sunday. Um, it has kicked off. Um, we have to get the number of children so that we can get the list in. Is that right, Laura? Correct. We have to get that list in. Otherwise, we're going to miss the window. We don't want to wait to the last minute. So um, get the list in so we can get our account in and get it to the administrator at uh, Marine Corps Tours for Tots. Um, also, we need to list in for officers for ministry. Stand up, Patricia. Deacon, I'm sorry, Deacon Fox. Um, January, we missed that window last year, but we don't want to miss it this year. Every ministry got to have a ministry chair. We do have also ministers that I place as the ministry overseer <laughs> to help spiritually with those ministries. And so we need to make sure every ministry have a ministry chair. Amen? Amen. So please get your ministry chair to Deacon Fox. Let's not wait till the last minute, uh, last minute please. Next week, and your calendar dates. We still need those in regardless of um, what fell through with our Latino friends, amen. And that's still not out the window. They still want to um, do some events with us, but they're still struggling trying to find a place to worship with in the afternoon. Um, but nevertheless, we're gonna stay in prayer for them as well. All right. Um, so that they um, are able to find a place that they are comfortable with to worship with a worship. Uh, next Sunday, uh, matter of fact, I hate to have uh, Deacon Fox. Uh, let me let me let me do this instead of pointing her out. All my council survivors, please stand because we got more than just one. Come on, come on, all my council survivors, please stand. Amen. Let's let's give God. A We don't take this lightly because we're in Cancer Awareness Month, amen? amen. All right. and, and, and so next Sunday, we will be celebrating um, Cancer Awareness Month. And we have a speaker that's coming um, next next Sunday, uh, Pastor Maddie McMarron. Um, she's no stranger to us. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's yeah. all right. She and her husband used to worship with us, but they are, um, everybody has a season. Yeah. And, and all of you are not going to be here forever either. Uh, everybody has a season. God brings us here for seasons. And so she will be coming to deliver the word next week. We also have, did they ever get back with you? Yeah. I'll call the first day by the Lord. And we also have a tree in the back. Okay. Like for people, if if your oh. if your family member or friend is deceased from cancer, put it in chalk on the black tags. If you're alive, like 
for me, all of me, but our names on the white ones. Can you get up and so people can hear? Because online they didn't probably get free. Um, we have a cancer tree in the back. So if your family member or friend, we take friends too, we love everyone, is deceased, put their name on the black tag with the chalk and hang it on the tree. If you're like this, being a stepping around, and then hang it on the tree. If your family member is alive, like me, first of all, Put it on the white tag, put your name on the white tag. You don't have to put nothing else but your name. And just hang it on the tray. And don't forget Sister Marjorie back there. She was one of the Yes. Just put yeah. it on the tray. Amen. 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 And and so we do give God some glory here for yes. that. Okay. That's you know, that's a dreaded disease. Um, you know, and we are still um it's a lot I could say about that, but I'm not gonna not gonna go there. Um, but anyway, so we we want to we had planned and it was late. Um, the Deacon Fox and I had talked about it. Um, there was was it the nurse over at uh, Spotsylvania Regional? Spotsylvania Regional. They wanted to come to us um, and sort of speak, and I had this wild idea that why they were here. Um, <laughs> that morning that I was going to dedicate to do some testing um, if they were willing to do it. Um, but maybe next year we'll do it, you know, if the Lord allow us. And because uh, I think they do, I know at the VA we do PSA testing a little different than that, um, where they don't do that dreaded old test like they used to do. So, and, and men, we, we you need to get we need to get tested as well as the women need to get tested as well. Um, I know I get mine tested every year. And I'm talking to my son as well. I think you know they I can't remember what the age they said, but I started getting tested about eight nine years ago. So, um, but either way, you still need to get get tested if you you know. It's something that even if it doesn't run in your family, you still need to get tested. Amen. Um, Amen. Make sure you get colonoscopies, get an upper GI, lower GI. Make sure you get all those things done. Um, you know, I used to hear that people say that they were, you know, they didn't need to go to the doctor. Um, I hate to tell you this, but God allowed those doctors, yeah, they're practicing, but um, tests are necessary. To find out things before things get out of hand. All right, all right. Um, and so, you know, we need to get out of the mindset that we don't need to go to the doctor. All right. You do. Um, I, I, for years ago, when I first came here, I used to get that mindset, and if it wasn't for my wife, I may not be standing here. No, I wouldn't be standing here today. But I was having an uncontrollable thirst. I just had started developing and waking up all night long using the bathroom. And I wasn't one who used to go to the doctor a lot. They come to find out I had developed diabetes. Oh, wow. And, and now cholesterol ran high in my family, but diabetes didn't. And stress will bring on all kinds yes, of things yes, 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 yes. on your body. Yes. You know, um, and so you got to understand that um, we have to, at some point in time, learn as people to relax. Y'all understand where I'm coming from? Yes. Right? And so, you know, that's why I share sometimes. Sometimes it's good to just stop and praise God. Yes. Anyway, listen to what I said. Stop and praise God. Anyhow. Yes, anyhow. Sometimes you just don't need a reason. But he woke you up. That's right. And when I learned that the acid was so high in my blood, 
that by that Thursday, they had to put me in the hospital. And my wife was telling me, she kept telling me, honey, you need to go to the hospital, you need to go to the doctor. I, I'm all right. And it got to the point that I was starting to, you know, I don't want to get graphic. But the minute I went to the hospital that Thursday, I went to the Tuesday, it was a Monday or Tuesday, honey, after you had grilled me to go to the hospital. You know, most of us really don't like this. So. I know that's right. You know, we hard headed. Ain't that right, Lord? Give your head up, Lord. Give your head up, Lord. Amen. And the first time I went, they put an IV in me. And, I, you know, and, I thought they bought my sugar down because it was over 500. I went back home and I couldn't hold nothing down. I was still just feeling rough. By that Thursday, I went on back into there again. I was pastoring here. I was here. And as soon as I stepped foot in there again, they said, we got to admit you. And as soon as they put, as soon as my butt hit the bed, the regular bed, they said, no, you got to go to ICU. And I had made peace with God when I got to ICU. I said, Lord, if it's my time to go home, All right, man. Come on, come on. I'm ready. All right. And I remember the night when they came in and said he had no vitals. Nobody knew about this but me and God. And I told my wife, they got the paddles out. And they said, he, we don't have a, 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 a blood pressure. And what had happened was, and I, I could see myself why they doing this. And I'm like, I'm here. I could see all of this. I'm here. Wow. But God had told me, he said, you're not going anywhere. All right. Because what I told you to do, you go back and do what I instructed you to do. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. And one, one of the nurses looked over and said, oh, while they was rubbing up the paddles, the blood pressure cup had slid down my arm. I said, thank God for a keen nurse. Y'all understand? <laughs> I said it to myself later. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 you know, from that point on, I began to progress upwards. But it was a check on me to begin to understand that we got to start taking care of ourselves. Amen. Amen. You know, you know, we love our fried chicken. I still like my fried chicken every now and then. We love that fried chicken, fried pork chops, fried fish. I still I like it. But that stuff ain't good for us. Amen. Come on. Y'all. I'm gonna tell them, Lord, Lord won't eat baked chicken. <coughs> If it ain't fried, die laid to the side, Lord. Ain't it? Wow. I'm telling them, Lord, but I, I gotta tell them. So. Who Lord? Well, I can't, I can't, I can't, can't tell on him because I done started drinking the cold zero. But, but we gotta do better. Amen. We gotta look out for one another. Amen. 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 We do. I got to look out for you. You got to look out for me. All right. Mr. Patterson get on me all the time. You know. And me. And you know, I hear this all the time. If y'all look at our makeup, we are homo sapiens. Right? I'm going to leave the other group alone. We were not made to be mediators. But we love me. We were actually made as uh, vegetarian and fruit eaters. We were made, when we look at the Garden of Eden, there was no meat in it. But we'll slap a piece of chicken down real quick. Real quick. <laughs> <laughs> but you look at the way things are made today. And, you know, uh, my niece that came to our my, my birthday party, a lot of our our medical issues come from y'all say, God said, you supposed to be announcing stuff. I am not announcing that. Yeah. And I'm gonna say out of this. Fish is better for us than a lot of the other meats. 
But then we got to watch what fish we eat. <laughs> you said what, brother? Person? <laughs> uh, what you say? Oh, I said a blind bottle still good. As <laughs> long as you soak all that salt out of it, yeah. So, but nevertheless, um, and and so we just we just gotta just continue to watch out for ourselves. Amen. Amen. And so um, I'm looking forward to the Thanksgiving. Looking forward to next week. Did I miss anything, Laura? I know I went over a whole lot that I wasn't supposed to go over. Uh, but it's just in my spirit to to do that. Um, Thank you. Amen. Bless your heart, Sister Carrie. <laughs> I, 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 y'all already know I'm not a regular by the book pastor. You know, and I'm gonna look out for y'all. And I hope y'all look out for me. And I remember y'all start looking out for me because then y'all got baked chicken and stuff there. I know sometimes y'all come by and look at my plate. Y'all do. Y'all do. And I and I like that. You know, make sure I'm, I'm eating the way I'm supposed to. Amen? Because longevity comes from doing what we are supposed to do. When it's time for our clock to tip, we're going to go away from here. Nothing we can do about it. But there's some of the people that eat the help as they can eat. When God says it's time to go, we go out of here. And there's nothing we can do. Amen? But in the meantime, let's live as healthy as we possibly can. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm gonna turn it back over to our uh, worship leader. I know she's sitting back there. But come on, Papa, get up. <laughs> Let me do my job. Amen. 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 My ankle kept swelling up. So I went to the doctor and he said that I had a broken bone in it. Uh, so if you see me and I look a little taller today, it's because they put lifts in my shoes. <laughs> and I got to admit, it scared me and I was a little afraid. But then God spoke to me. The Lord told me to get up, which you sit down, he is here for. So can I get, I don't know about anybody else. Well, I didn't want to. well, you know, that's something we've gotten away from. Amen. Because sometimes we have we have um, gotten to the point where we have rushed our service to get out. And uh, one of the things we all not rush is prayer. Come on now. Something that we all are in need of Amen. is prayer. Yes. Yeah. You know, um, I'm finding not only that we're in need of it, but our country yes, is in need Hello. of prayer. I didn't forget that this young man right here that I'm looking at shared with me last week. Does he still feel the same? That he wanted to be back. He's quiet today. He wanted to be back. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm going to get out the camera for a second here. I remember last week. Where are all the ministers at? Come on, bring all the ministers. Come on. Amen. Amen. Oh, you know, one of the things I was sharing um, that, um, that, um, I want all my ordained leaders to come over here. And also let you know too, we uh I'm gonna be bring some names to you on one day for can I can I can I announce that name? Yes, you can. Um she talked to us, we've been in prayer about it. We were gonna meet Tuesday on it with the deacons in the ministry. And I hadn't really talked to nobody but Sharon about it. Um, and she's been growing, her husband is a minister. And we wanted to bring a name to the church too. The church but we want y'all to be in prayer for um, Sister Anderson and the Waterfall. We want to 
announced that we want to bring to the church for her to start walking in January as a walking deep. God and God all 
by yourself. We know, Lord God, that you can deliver, that you can move at your will and your way. We know, Lord God, that at your voice, that things can be changed. And so, God, we're calling on you right now at the front of us. That you would move at every heart and every mind, Lord God. That you would deliver, Father God, out of the power of the Lord. That you would move through thy will like a rushing wind. Like you did in Acts 2, Lord God, when the Holy Spirit came upon them. Lord God, we ask now that you would continue to bless and guide in this place. Because we are able to do exceedingly. And the fundamental of all of us who do it, think, ask, or do. So God, we thank you, we praise you, we love you, because you are God, that you are God, that you are living in God, the salvation of God, the salvation of God, and the salvation of God, and the salvation God. Answer prayers that have been prayed in this circle and in this church. God. Protect families in this service yes, and in this service. Yes, yes, God, strengthen families in this place. God, continue to keep tens of that day in this place and in this church. God, continue to touch finances in this place and in this church. God, continue to touch health in this place and in this church. God, continue to heal and to live in this place and in this church. Your 
the center of my joy. When I lost my direction, to recover the wise way. Thank you. 
just something that was in my heart this morning uh, all week long that some of us deal with and some of us don't and the question is, is how do we deal with it um, I want to take you to a familiar passage of the first Peter all right. All right. And, uh, first Peter 5 7 and 8 first Peter 5 7 and 8 
And I'm going to read it in King James Version first, and then I'll read it in God's Word's Version. When you have it, just say amen. amen. And it reads as thus, casting all your care upon him, what he carried for you. Be sober, be diligent, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. But I missed the sixth verse, and I got to go back and add the sixth verse in it. Because without proper context, it will add it to it. But the sixth verse is, humble yourself therefore unto the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. So in the reading, God's words translation, be humbled by God's power, so that when the right time comes, he will honor you. To turn all your anxiety over to God, because he cares for you. Keep your mind clear and be alert. Your opponent, the devil, is prowling around like a long line as he looks for someone to devour. Amen. Amen. If we may add a title to this text today, um, who do you turn your stress over to? All right. Who do you turn your stress over to? Let us pray. Father, our God, we pray. It is now preaching time. Yes, yes. Your servant realizes that you cannot preach until the Holy Spirit comes. Holy Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable unto thee, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. It is sometimes hard for us to measure who we turn our stress over to. Through the years, some of us have turned our stress over to different things, people. Um, stress and anxiety is one of the things that we find avenues to turn over to release ourselves, relieve ourselves of the various pressures we're going through. And many of us find various things to turn it over to to help us just for that very moment. Everybody has a stress relief. Everybody have an outback. Some people's outback stress reliever is different than others. Some people find food as their stress reliever. Some people find alcohol All right. as their stress reliever. Some people find drugs as their stress reliever. Some people find being promiscuous as their stress reliever. Some people find different things as their stress relief. Even sometimes people find a cell phone getting on the two-way line as their stress relief. Whatever they may find to be their stress reliever is an outlet for them to pour out their anxiety. All right. But the text doesn't tell us to go to those various things as to be our stress reliever. But many of us, we only go to things that we can see, taste, feel, or hear. I'm not exempted. Because most of us, we have faith. We believe in a true and living God. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. But when the road gets rough uh, yes. and times get hard, many of us turn to what we think we know. Should I be real about it? And sometimes we develop an addiction to the things we think helps us relieve stress. But the text says for us to cast our cares, 
our anxieties, yes. our stress yes. on the one who cares for us. Yes. Nobody cares for you like God cares for you. I can't tell you how it works, but God cares for you more than anybody you ever can think can. Sometimes when you sitting in that dark corner and think that nobody cares about you, God does. He loves you more than he can consider your boo boo. Y'all know what I'm talking about. He loves you more than that job who, if you hadn't got there by 8 o'clock, sometimes 745, y'all know what I'm talking about, because 745 is 8 o'clock. He loves you more than your children do. Because most of the time, our children don't love us unless they need something. I ain't talking about my, my, my children. But even so sometimes. He even loves us more sometimes than a husband and a wife say that they love each other in the moment. That's how much God cares for us. But, but, but what is Anxiety. Can I give us some examples in the Bible? In 1 Samuel, Hannah distressed because she was unable to conceive children. That's anxiety. When your husband has got another wife and she's teasing you that she can have kids and you can't. That's anxiety. Over in Esther, uh, there was a royal decree put out to murder your people, and you know that you can't do anything but warn Mordecai. That, that's anxiety. Yeah. Uh, y'all understand where I'm going with that. And so we've got to understand that sometimes the thing that we think we're going to may not be a whole lot. But it can be anxiety to us. I, I, I know a soldier right now that is in our midst that's going through some various treatment, and I can understand that that is anxiety for him. But 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 in the long run, he still got his hand in the master's hand and said, "I feel good, Pastor." But I know I got to go through that road. But he's casting his cares upon the Lord. And so, and so I'm thankful and grateful that, that sometimes when we go through financial situations and, and sometimes we don't know when the end is going to meet, that can be a night for folks. But, but we got to learn how to cast because when we don't, there's somebody called a roaring lion who is prowling around to find his way to creep into our situation and our circumstance. And when he does, he knows how to put a foothold in uh, our anxiety. And I don't know about you, but when he does, he knows how to spread his wings to make whatever's going on in your life feel a little bit worse than what it really is because you know sometimes the thing that may have started out small can end up big but 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 when we go back up to the seventh verse God said oh, if you have just cast it on me I can make everything all right you never can have to worry about the eighth verse was because if you just cast it. And I'm thankful because every now and then stress may make its way in. But but if you don't worry about the Roman line, God says, just take it and throw it on me. And I'm learning that sometimes it may be there for a minute, but 
You got to say, here you go, God. Amen. I don't pick with my, me and my wife always, I got to pick with them every now and then. I know they say sometimes, why well, you got to use me as your preaching subject? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's because I love you in my life. <laughs> My wife was getting on her sister last night. Every time she says something. <laughs> I mean, Sharon couldn't say something edgewise, so Cheryl was just getting on. And I said to Cheryl, I said, we got to take Sharon home? Yeah. I said, well, let me take the fish home first. But you're going to have to take the fish home first. <laughs> I looked at Cheryl, I said, ain't that's what you just got on Sharon about? <laughs> and Sharon about choked laughing in the back seat because <laughs> and I'm I'm just laughing because she I said, see, the very thing you doing, and and I'm and I'm uh, I'm like, uh. I said, God, I said, sometimes we get anxious. <laughs> on others when we do the very same thing to somebody else. And I and, and it made me wonder because we all do it. I'm not exempt. And I had that thought think about it. I said, God, now you make me understand. That's why we have to cast, we have to give everything through humility to you. That's why God says, don't be prideful. Y'all remember I told you I had to go back and throw that sixth verse in here. Because a lot of times we do things through pride. And sometimes God has to bring a hunger and humble us sometimes. Hello, somebody has to wake us up and says, wait a minute. Do unto others as you will have others do unto you. And I think about this thing, others. That's why, that's why, that's why I, I, I am so thankful that, that even I try not to do folk the way they do me. Because that's a thing that starts with a K called karma. And y'all know how karma read, right? We don't say it across Paul for the day, right? Here, yeah. Cause y'all, y'all. But but karma comes back, and karma comes back full force. And and and, 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 and it is interesting because because people don't understand what you put out in the atmosphere is like a boomerang. All right. All right. Yeah. People don't realize that. That's why I believe some of the things that's happening up in our nation's capital is starting to come back to roots. Watch this now. And even in our nation, because when you treat people wrong for so long, things has a way of coming back to haunt you. That's why we got to be careful how you treat folk. That's why everybody you meet, you got to treat with happiness and gladness. Because you never know when you're going to need them folk again. You don't understand where I'm coming from right there, right? Because you never know when the very person you treat like trash may be the very person you need to pray over you when you're in your bad moments. That's why you got to be nice and good to everybody. And so that's why I like that. God says, just give it to me. And every now and then you want to take it back. Y'all know how we're Indian givers. Y'all 
Y'all know how, because we love to take care of stuff ourselves. But I've learned and I'm learning that when we give it to God, our cares and our stress and our anxieties, he do a whole lot better with it. And I don't mean no harm, I can sleep a little better. Oh God. Amen. Ain't nothing like a wonderful night of sleep. You don't toss. You don't turn. And, 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 and you know, you you just sleep so peaceful, sleep like a baby. Nestle in the arms of your mom. And wake up in the morning satisfied that you've had a good eight hours of sleep. But again, that enemy, the devil waits for moments for you to become stressed out. Y'all understand where I'm coming from because when you come stressed out, it's when he sticks his foot through the door. Again, as I close, I don't keep a one point today. Turn it over. Turn it over to God. Stress is not worth having. You know, my announcement, we talked about what will, <laughs> what will cause diabetes, heartache, blood pressure going up, high cholesterol. You know, all those fun little things that we suffer from. And here's another one. It, it will cause you to have a stroke. Those things cause all kind of funny things to our bodies. I was stressed last night. Even my daughter-in-law recognized it. I had to go relax. And I was stressed because of homework. I'm not lying to you. It, it confirmed this sermon this, this morning. I got to tell you the truth. And I sit there in my recliner and say to myself, why in the world am I putting myself through this? But God just said to me, just give it to me. And I sat down in my chair and started doing it with no stress after I gave it to him. I said, thank you, Lord. Because sometimes we stress over the small stuff. All we got to do is read, study, Then I told Keith this morning, I said, why am I going backwards? I should have just went ahead and worked on my doctrine that left alone. <laughs> but there's a purpose for everything. Yes, sir. Right, sir. Right. There's a reason for everything that God does. Yes. What happens to do. So that at the end of the day, his will is fulfilled. His plan <laughs> can move on. And we have to stay the course so that all that God gets is the glory for all that we do. Nothing that God says on this earth will be easy. Look at Jacob. Jacob had to go away. And the first woman he wanted to marry didn't come easy after seven years. Matter of fact, when he got to there to marry, who was there standing? Leah. When he unveiled that woman, I know he was surprised. He probably stuffed his foot and said some words that is not. <laughs> you can't repeat from the pulpit. But he didn't give up. He worked another seven years for Rachel. And here's the kicker that after Leah started having some babies, Rachel couldn't. Bill Ha and the, the handmaid of, of Rachel started having kids, but 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 Rachel still couldn't have any kids until God opened her womb. You know how stressed All that Rachel right. could have been? Yeah. Just like him. All right. All right. 
But 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 here's the thing: when she finally had Joseph, oh boy, he dressed Joseph up right. But Joseph had a big mouth. <laughs> Turn it over. It's time today. Turn it over to the Lord. Amen. Release your stress on God. When I was, I wanted to share this before I got up and preached, but when somebody I know it today, and how I know, I, I get a burning in my hand when somebody is healed. I don't know who it was. And I haven't done it in a while, but I was teaching Wednesday on the spiritual gifts, and I missed it. As y'all stand to your feet. We were teaching Wednesday on the spiritual gifts and the gifts that's operation in the church. And it's amazing that we come back Sunday and we exercise what we were teaching Wednesday. And this morning, I felt the impartation of the Spirit this morning. And we anointed someone this morning. And I know it because I've done it before that when I, I anoint someone, when someone was healed, I feel a burning in my hand. And so I don't know who it was. And I'm not going to claim to know who it was. But this morning, somebody received something that God had for you this morning. That's all I'm going to share. Um, and I shared something for 1 Corinthians 12, the nine spiritual gifts. We shared the ascension gifts from first, I mean, from Ephesians 4.11. I'm sharing it with you also, though, those who did not attend Bible study on, on um, Wednesday. Go back and look at those scriptures because it's paramount and important that you understand that those gifts are resident within the church. That was wisdom this morning that Deacon Fox used, even though she didn't understand what God was doing, or she may have, that asked for the anointing because somebody needed some healing this morning. Oh, Amen. Right. And so um, I shared that because the Lord dropped it in my spirit to, to drop that on you all before we leave today. Um, that is part of our ministry. That we are all have the gift that God has given us to write together. Yes. Yes. I'm not the only one that has that gift. Yes. That gift is resident within the body. Go back and look at that scripture. I'm giving you all oh, some nuggets yes. to go study. But until then, go go study. That's why when Keith shared with you all and Jerry. You all miss nuggets shared and con and conversation. It's not just lecture on Wednesday. We all have a dialogue, conversation. We all talk together. It's not like on Sunday where I get to just talk to you all. On Wednesday, we all get to talk together. Amen? Amen. Look to your neighbor and say, neighbor. May the, Lord May the Lord watch between me and thee while we're absent from one another. I love you. Go in peace.